Every minute of every day, someone calls for help from a paramedic. Their job is to bring order out of chaos, stabilise the victim and transport them to hospital. A night in the life of a paramedic providing help. Uh, and, uh, you meet some amazing people under all, in all sorts of uh, circumstances and it does sort of make you, you know, weigh up your own life and you, you think you've got problems and you see some, some other people that are really sort of down and out and you soon realise you don't really have a, <laughs> a hell of a lot to worry about. Everyone's got their story and everyone's got their problems and some people, you know, deal with them in what we deem as being healthy and others don't and go down this path and then we meet them. <laughs> NBA code nine, truck into a live electrical pole, male patient trapped. Is your leg broken or you're not no, sure? It's all right. Well, oh, just stay calm, mate. We've okay. got the police coming. It's all right, mate. This works. They'll be here in three minutes, all right? Yeah. You know how we were working up the top here? They hit the telegraph pole, full pole. Yeah, no, it's still there, but it's uh, snapped. Just look straight at me now. What's your name, Mike? My name's James. This is Scott here. Would you look straight at me? This honey is sure to be making the case. Ah, we're just going to start with these sports that they're working on. Going to St George? 984. Thank you. We're with one for St George. Thanks. I'm going to head you back up 138 at a mile. He's 47 years of age. The driver of a truck got into a pole, approximately 60 to 70 miles an hour. The patient was attacked mainly by the fireman for about 60 minutes. suffered a black eye, bruising and a twisted ankle. My main support structure over their ears would have to be my wife. Have to be. Although I don't tell her that every day, but it would be pretty hard for me to have coped over all the years with the things that she knows that I've been to. But of course it's had a toll on her as well. Because some of the stuff that I've had to put up with, she's had to put up with in a way as well. She knows that I love my job. Like, I always have. It's all that I've ever wanted to do my whole life and I'm still doing it and I'm planning to stay around um, till I'm 65 and if you if you showed that on a TV show there's a lot of ambos that may be watching that and be going oh no he's not going to hang around for another 15 years or 14. <laughs> You've got a 92 year old male whose vital core buzzer has been activated. He may be trapped inside the house. <laughs> Did the road rules say stop? Do they just keep rolling forward? Oh, 
Have you gained access? Is he home? Uh, I've only just come down. Okay, so he's 92, is he? Hello? 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 You don't know where he keeps the keypad? No, I don't. Oh, here he is. Mate, you set your vital call off. We were just about to break into your house. Yeah, did you press your button there? Well, I bet we can. <laughs> uh, you want to bet? I've got the ambulance rescue squad here. I bet they can get in. <laughs> what, what do you want to get into the house? Well, because your vital call was set off. So where's, where's your vital call? We've got to press it and say you're all right. See, now, it's now, indicating to us that you need help. So you might have leaned on the fence. I leaned on the fence. Yeah. How long ago okay. was that? Well, just now, we're here. Yeah. they've rung this lady oh, and then we're here. So we were just about to demolish so your house. So you and tell them you're all right, eh? Well, let's go in and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, That's going. not your fault. These things happen. Do you think maybe you should wear it round your neck or something? Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. This is Sandra from Bottle Call. Do you need help? <laughs> okay, I've got their ambulance, I've got everyone here, but I must have touched the button on my arm, on the fence. I did you. Okay. <laughs> if you're so okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. Not a problem at all, Mrs. Smith. You take care, won't you? No, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> all right, Mr. Smith, it's all sorted. That's good. Well, as long as you're okay, sir. Yeah. All right. Continue to have your chats over the fence. I'll Just watch you, your button. When you get 92, you'll be as good as me. Mate, I've got to get there. You got there. <laughs> you've, you've achieved something I probably won't very achieve. Good. good on you, my friend. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks very much. Ernest now wears his vital call button around his neck. For me, it's not necessarily about exciting jobs. Um, if... Uh, an elderly lady or gentleman's fallen on the floor at one o'clock in the morning and they can't get up and their partner calls us to help. Yeah, that's fine. I don't mind that. These people are dependent on people like us to, to help them get through their day. Um, but I have a bit of a belief um, if I'm dealing with an older, an older lady um, and her husband's passed away, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to explain, but I sort of think, well, the husband's gone it's up to someone to look after this lady. Now, it's not our most exciting job, but it's still part of our core responsibility is to look after people in the community. Um, so if that means we've got to go there and, and help someone off the floor or, or whatever, then, then so be it. Someone's got to do it. Um, you know, her partner's not around to look after her now. And again, it's not like I think someone's up there looking down on us, but you know, I sort of think, oh, well, I think it's rewarding work. It doesn't have to be exciting to be rewarding. 63 MVA, female lying on the road, unable to move, possible hit and run, police are on scene. 963, copy that. Broken into. Okay. Just put your head down, relax. What's your first name? Susan. Susan, my name's Zordi, love. How'd you injure yourself? Oh, uh, how did this happen? Um, Have you had any alcohol to try? No. Okay. Sides your leg, are you hurt anywhere else? No. Okay. Do you want a blanket now, yeah? Yeah. She's got a femur. Yep. Yeah, all right. And James, you stay there, Susan. Uh, you all right? My leg. All right, we're going to do something about it. I'm just going to talk to the police. James? Yep. Some obs, please. Do you know what happened, mate, just quickly? First off. He's not telling us too much at this point, but what we've sort of gleaned from it is that someone's tried to grab her. There's been a struggle whilst there's a car parked here on the street. And the thinking is that the car has actually then run her down and left the scene. Ran her down yeah. and left the scene. Okay. Susan, does yeah. your neck hurt at all? No. Is your chest love? No. Your tummy? A bit, yeah. There. Where, here? On the side, yeah. Um, oh, here. There is someone here at the moment. I don't know. 
They're at the front of your house. Uh, yep. James, when we get a chance, can we get another blood pressure on it, please? Why oxygen? It's good for you. Yep. I think my leg's breaking. It is, love. It is. Oh, okay. No About 80 odd. More food. Oh, God. Can you just get some Maxillon, please? Oh, what's going on? So I'm just giving you something for the pain, love. Are you a friend, mate? Brother. Yeah, look, mate, she's fine. She's broken her leg, all right. Hartman's is running. Can you just put the sats on her chest so I can keep her eye on it, mate? Does that hurt? Not that one. James, grab a Hartman's and heat the Hartman's up. You're doing really well, Susan. You're doing really well, love. Nice and still for us. Okay, nice and still. I know it's hurting you. You can feel me squeezing your toes, can you go? Yeah. 110, Audi. Pulse is 122, so How it's 98. Sets? 98. And that happens is about 500 mils. Oh, my okay. Am I alright? Yeah, you're yeah. fine. Susan, yep. you've broken your leg really bad, okay? It's just going to hurt like buggery if we move you. So what we're doing at the moment is giving you some pain relief. Before we start playing with your leg, you know, trying to straighten up and all that, we want to make sure that at least we've decreased the pain Susan. quite dramatically. Oh, yeah, I'm all right, eh? Yeah, it's going to be fine. I want to keep her warm, all right? Try not cutting more clothes at this stage. Nice and still, Bob, nice and still. I've just given another five milligrams of morphine. We'll get another blood pressure. I'll give another five. Everything's fine. Um, she's got abrasions to the back. Her main problem is that femur. So, oh, I know, sweet. Is that the morphine, Pete? Mm. How are you going, Susan? Oh, my, what's going on? Why is there so many people? Oh, it's just the police healer. Can I ask a couple of things? Yeah. Susan, is it? Susan. Do you know what happened? Do you know how you did the sword? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what happened? Yeah, yeah. Remember? I can't remember, to be honest. Can't remember? Here. Yeah. Open your eyes wide, Susan. Am I alright? Yes, sweetie. I'm going to straighten your leg, okay? Oh, no. I can't. Tell me when you're ready, Audi. Okay, you can hold my hand if you want, sweet boy. You're doing really well. Okay. <laughs> You've measured it up? Oh, that's right, we had trouble. Let me measure it on the other side. Just get it to straighten it up a little. Okay, Susan, Susan can you left straighten left your left leg for us? You still with us? Yeah. Feel sleepy? Oh, I'll be right back. Yes, love. You're going to be fine, all right? OK, but like I said, you've broken your leg, all right? I'll still put that there. So they can fix it up. Don't worry. I just want to out of here as quick as possible now, James. Now that we've got the leg secured. All right. Sleepy, are you? Susan. Oh, all right. She's just having a bit of a sleep. She's all right. Should you mask off for a second? All right. Oh, no. Okay, this one, huh? All right, one, uh, two, you're three. Right here, Danny. Yep. Okay. Watch the stretcher. Right Couple of pumps, Susan. Yeah, Can you just fix that oxygen? How are you feeling? Oh. Can you pass the mic now? 963. Oh, no. Thanks, departing now, one for Liverpool. Can you get a mark on uh, Channel 21? Okay. Okay, she's a 20 year old female. Okay, nice and still. Yeah, I know your mum's in the front seat. My mum? Yeah. Your mum, aren't you? Yeah. Mum's in the front seat. She can hear you, but she just can't talk to you yet. We're at Liverpool Hospital, love. You don't remember what happened? No. Your mum's here, love. Mum. Susan had a broken femur and smashed pelvis. She made a good recovery. Pinky 963, elderly male with cardiac history, stroke and emphysema, complaining of chest pain. 963, copy that. Hello. How are you going? Can we just turn the TV down? 
What's the problem tonight? Yeah, how long have you been like that for? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. You're diabetic, aren't you? Yeah. Are you on insulin or just tablets? Insulin. No, have you got any chest pain at all? Yeah, I did have. You did have, don't have any now? I did have brew. Okay, I'm going to put you on some oxygen. What's your medical history? I just got out of hospital. Yeah, what were you in hospital for? I had a stroke. Okay. Are you allergic to anything at all? No. When did this breathing problems come on? Yeah, up in here ago. Yeah. Alright, Manny. Just some oxygen, alright? No. What's your first name? Christopher. Christopher. <coughs> that oxygen helping with your breathing? Yeah. <coughs> and no chest pain at the moment? No. So you're in hospital for a stroke, were you, Chris? Yeah, I just got out. And then they took me to brace shots. Well, for a bit of rest, was it? No, the stroke went to my brain and my dumb system. Do you smoke, Chris? I used to. Oh. Oh. I suppose they have a special job. Alright, don't worry, just try and conserve your energy at the moment. <coughs> How often do you test your sugar? A couple of times a day. <coughs> just slowly. Take your man. time. <coughs> but you've bottom right in the crease. Oh, I'll get your legs. No worry. Uh, Is your breathing getting worse, mate? Uh, all right, mate. Uh, and what they say about your lungs? They're all right. You don't have any pains in your chest, Chris? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I've got pains in my chest. No. Right, we'll get five milligrams of morphine. Oh. I'm just going to give him 40 milligrams of Lasix. Oh. Oh. <coughs> but you're going to be okay, all right? Uh. Underneath your tongue. Uh. Because what we think at the moment, you've got fluid in your lungs. <coughs> I see me, Doctor. I was supposed to see you tomorrow. I've been coughing up nice. black stuff and blood. All right. Mate. I've been getting very dizzy. Right. And I feel like I want to fall over, it's like I was having a stroke again. Have you ever had a heart attack, Chris? Oh, six weeks ago. Six weeks ago? I was in this hospital. Six weeks ago? Yeah. For a heart attack? It went, went to my brain and All right. said it was a stroke. Oh, okay. And All right. We're at the hospital, Chris. Oh, oh we're right. Oxygen's on. Suffering pulmonary edema, our patient was rushed through to have a triple bypass and made a full recovery. There are rare occasions where um, we go to jobs and um, we can actually walk away afterwards and say, well, uh, if I hadn't been there at that time uh, doing this job with my equipment training and background, they would have died. And yeah, that's the most rewarding thing. You're flat for days, you know, you just, it's like, Nine six three, copy that. Who's the car that hit him? How you going, mate? How you going? Russell. Hi, Russell. My name's Audi. Where you hurt, Russell? Okay, my left knee and my right ankle. Is it? Back starting to hurt just the way I'm lying. All right. Does your neck hurt at all? No. You all right, are you? Yeah. In the car by yourself? Yes. How fast are you going? Uh, I was just around the corner from here. Yeah. 20, 20, 30. Quick. Okay, was just he hiking? The was the bike going pretty fast? or? Yeah. Well, I just turned here and I saw my window just smash. All right, mate. All right, Audi. Driver's all right. All right, Russell, try and stay still, mate. Hurt there, Russell? No. There? Yeah, there. All right. We'll log roll him straight on the spine board. Everybody off the ride, please. Right. Everybody off the ride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, guys. Okay, just uh, put this in the ambulance for now. Yeah, someone else. Right? Have a look at it later, all right? Let's just get you off the road first. Right. Can you just give us a hand, mate, too, please? Yeah, we're just going to roll him onto this board. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. All right. Now, Russell, I know your neck doesn't hurt, but just keep it still until we have a picture. 
box, I'll grab the gear already and I'll jump in. Probably your levers that saved you, mate. So we're going to try and take this helmet off. Yep. You should slide off now without that attached. Yeah. Put it out. Well, I'll just hold your neck just in case. Yep. You all right, mate? Mate, you need a new ring tone. All right. So your neck doesn't hurt at all? No. Don't shake your head, mate. Just say yes or no. Cool. Can I cut this? Is that all right? Yeah, go for it. How fast do you reckon you're going? Ballpark it for me. We're not the cops. 80. And he just sort of pulled out? or? I thought he saw me because he slowed and went and slowed and okay, went. Right. You relax. <sighs> Had any alcohol or drugs today? No, um, yeah. don't shake your head. Now, Russell, do you have any medical history of anything? No. Are you allergic to any medication? No. I want to avoid cutting your jacket. Please do. <laughs> I'll let the hospital do that. Oh, yeah. God. Now, Russell, mate, I'm just going to cut your jeans, all right? Now, keep your head still, because I'm just going to get some sandbags to hold your head. Just put your arms by your side for me for a second. Keeping your head nice and still, all right? Are these zip-up boots, Russell? Or? Oh, yes, they are. Velcro over in the middle, on the inside. I found it. Zip-up. See this T-shirt you're wearing? This is a cardigan. Oh, shit. That's all right. It's not even mine. This is it? I'm mine. Oh, it's a fence four. Please tell me it's not cutting my boots. I'm not cutting it, mate. Don't worry. I've undone your first mm -hmm. one. Can you put him with some oxygen, please, Chuck? Yep. Now, Russell, did you go over the car? From where I landed? No, I don't think so. I'm just going to put this oxygen rest on your face for now. Yeah. I ended Good up for you. pretty much where I hit him. And then the monitor and sap. Yep, I'm doing it now. Heat is going. All right, just need one finger. Just going to put some dots on your chest. Take a look at what your heart's doing. A bit cold for a second. Sorry, mate. I'm just going to push on your tummy, Russell. No. Doesn't hurt? No. All right. And your hands all right, Russell? Yeah, fine. I'm going to put a little needle in your hand, all right, mate? Yeah, all right, mate. I'll get blood. All right. We want max long, morphine. You're a very lucky man, Russell. Morphine sulfate. What's the chance of getting out of hospital by Sunday morning? Sunday morning? What's happening Sunday morning? I've got a concert with the other one. Concert? What kind of concert? Oh, Delta Gordon. You got tickets for us? <laughs> Two tickets, we'll take them off here. 6.8 beers, though. Oh. So. 200 bucks. 200 bucks? We're worth that much, aren't we? We're right, James. Thanks. Uh, just one for Liverpool. Thank you. Just a bit of a narrow gap here, Audie. This hand's all right, Russell? Bit of a bump, Audie. Considering the mess to the car and the mess to the bike, you're going to be fine, all right? From what I can find, it's just both your ankles and your patella where you said it hurt. Okay, that's about all. You're a lucky man. Now we've given you some morphine. Does that help you with the pain? All right. Well, I think you'll make the concert all right, mate. Sunday, was it? Yeah. Just in case, give him the address of the station so he can forward the tickets. Well, on. that's right. If you can't go, you can send it to Fairfield Station and we'll go on your behalf. 963 destination. Keep your hands in. Russell suffered tissue damage to his left knee and ankle, but two days later made it to the Delta Goodrum concert in a wheelchair. Next week, another night in the life of a paramedic providing help.